nature developed materials that went through millions of years of evolution. So only materials that have exceptional superior properties would survive. And these are the natural structures that we see and study today. My general approach, I would call it by inspired engineering or by inspired materials. What I want to do is to create new materials, different materials, not exactly the same that nature has evolved because the purposes could be very different. The available materials for me could be different. So altogether, it's rather inspiration than mimicking. It's really learning and then designing something different. So pitcher plant is just one example of that. I don't think that many people knew about this excellent plant. There's this carnivorous plant that doesn't have to do anything to capture food. And the way nature does that, the way pitcher plant does that, it creates extra slippery surface where insects just slide into digestive juices of the organism due to very interesting surface properties. What we try to do, I'm not a biologist, but I'm a materials chemist, looking at these surfaces to identify basic structural and chemical features of these interfaces, and then to try to develop a new material, a new concept really in materials design, where surfaces for very broad range of applications can be designed to repel pretty much everything. Insects, bacteria, ice, dirt, and so on. So what I have here is an omniphobic coating that our lab has developed, and it's inspired by the Nepenthes pitcher plant, and it's called slips. Um, the long form is slippery, liquid-infused, porous surfaces. So what I have here is I'm going to start off with uh, just a regular glass slide that we slips coated and I'm just going to add some dyed water to the surface to show you how it works. So, so oops, I made a mess, but you can see that it slides off really easily and that's just water. So slips has many different applications and one of the applications we're considering is coating the inside of pipelines um, with this lubricant layer so that when you transport oil it'll require a lot less uh, pressure or energy to transport oil through these pipelines. Maybe half of my group is involved in trying to take these physical principles that we understand or we think we understand and develop useful materials, useful systems that can be applied and ideally commercialized for purposes of anti-icing materials or antibacterial surfaces. What I have here are petri dishes that have bacteria in them. This is a bacterium that's similar to the ones that you might find um, in a hospital setting, however these are not infectious, but it's the same species. These bacteria have been growing in this plate for two days, and I've put in here different types of surfaces. One is a glass surface, one is a plastic surface similar to what you might find in a hospital, it's a bit of a more low fouling situation, and the third is a similar type of plastic but that has been coated in the slips technology that you heard about. There's the glass. Here is the low fouling plastic that you will often find in hospitals. And there's a little bit more on there. And here is the slips treated surface. Now watch what happens as I pull this out. Do you see the biofilm peeling away? Now these bacteria are very small and they don't have a lot of color to them. They're kind of hard to see. So what I've done here is I've treated these with a solution called crystal violet. It dyes any organic material. So if there is any type of biofilm on the surface, you will be able to see it. And here we have the results of these. Here is the dyed glass surface. Here is the dyed plastic surface. And here is the dyed slip surface that was treated in exactly the same way. 
And as you can see, there's a clear difference in the amount of biofilm that remains on the slip surface versus the, the two controls. That's yet another one that not that many people know about, but I, I really think it represents an amazing example of what nature can do beautifully. This is a deep sea sponge. This is a perfect architecture that, is, that has fiber optical networks surrounding it. It is attached to ocean floor, and inside the sponge, there is always a couple of shrimp living inside and using sponge as its house and its illuminated house. That, going from nanoscale to macroscopic scale, we in fact use this as a inspiration for architectural materials. What we try to do is to develop models that repeat and scale up this natural sponge architecture into future designs for buildings that have their own fiber optical design. It's extremely light and extremely strong.